Yo, what's going guys? Happy to come back. Today we're going to be discussing some facts about every single troop in Clash of Clans. This includes the home village, builder base, heroes, and even pets. Although a few of these facts may have been mentioned in prior fact videos, I decided to include them anyways because after all, I wanted to mention every troop. So uh, yeah, let me know if you learned anything today. What was the most interesting fact you heard? So with that being said, let's get right into it. The Archer has appeared in every single loading screen since 2012. She is also the most requested troop in the game. Prior to the September 2014 update, healers in a clan castle used to heal damage buildings in your base. Also, since she can attack, she'll just stand there for an entire match if that's all you had and there's nothing to heal. According to a developer, one of the earlier concepts of the Yeti was originally going to be a chunkier, bigger and beefier minion called the Giant Minion. This was later used for the Super Minion instead. It is also one of three troops that are not in Clash Royale excluding Super Troops and Heroes. And of course, pets. But I mean, those were added like a week ago. Has it already been a month? God damn! The reason why the Hog Rider has a deeper, manlier voice in the game and a high-pitched voice in commercials and animations is because they had already recorded voices for him before he was added into the game. So when he was finally added into the game and started to make commercials, both of them had different voices. He also had no preferred target at launch, so he would just go for anything. The Lava Hound is the largest troop in the entire game. The Bowler was originally a troop idea for Clash Royale, but being scrapped, it was transferred to Clash of Clans. But ultimately, the Bowler was added in one of the Clash Royale updates anyway. The reason the battle machine doesn't wander around the base as other heroes do is because it's a machine and not a living being. That also explains why when you move its altar, it'll move the entire machine as well. Whereas in the home village, if you move the hero's altars, they'll just walk across to the new location. The original concept for the headhunter appears to have changed quite a bit. From a machine with an elixir tank to a knight, a king, a prince, it came a long way. The spikes along the back of the Electro Dragon lights up along their back, tail to head, one at a time. When all of them are lit up, it shoots lightning right after. This is how you can tell exactly when it'll shoot. The Barbarian is actually the only troop to have a skin. If the player enables the Champion King skin, well, so does the Barbarians. Also, at level 6, his idol will change. Instead of holding a sword with both hands, he then holds it with just one. The Giant only had four fingers up until 2016. He also used to bump both of his fists together while stationed in the army camp, but this no longer happens. Oddly enough, the goblins in the tutorial ignore your resource buildings and go straight to attacking a cannon. They are also one of the only troops in the game that can run across a spring shaft fast enough without being affected by it at all. If there are no buildings left, wall breakers will attack buildings but since they do so little damage to anything but walls, it's pretty much a suicide mission without a cause. It's also said that the Wabakers are dead builders since they both wear similar hats. Balloons are pretty much Wabakers that got promoted. The wizard's code name is called Mage. They also used to shoot lightning shots from level 4 and above, but this was later changed to purple fireballs. The dragon drops a human skeleton upon death. Also, when Dark Elixir was first added into the game, it was said that it was made from fossilized dragon bones. Although the P.E.K.K.A is a female, the name P.E.K.K.A is the Finnish equivalent to the English name Peter. Also, when she dies, her skeleton begins to get bigger as she levels up, because the physical troop also gets bigger. Now that is an attention to detail. The baby dragon is the only troop to appear in both the main village and the builder base with no visual changes at all. It also seems to explode into dark elixir at death despite being an elixir troop. The icon and picture of the miner shows him wearing a blue shirt. However, in battle, he's wearing a red shirt. The dragon rider is the only dragon variant that prioritizes defenses. Uh, sorry. That's kind of a lame fact. But it's such a new troop and so little is known about it, so uh, yeah, let's move on. 
A minion can outrun an air bomb. They also sneeze when you tap the army camps, and they sneeze more when at level 6 through 8. The Valkyrie has the same face as an archer. The golem was likely inspired by the Promethean from Age of Mythology. Both units are stone creatures that split into two, smaller versions of themselves, once defeated. The witch is simply a zombified archer. The Ice Golem is one of two troops to have different stats when used defensively rather than offensively, the other being the Miner. Rage Barbarians are said to be Rage because they lost their swords, which is also the reason for them using axes. Oddly enough though, the Rage Barbarian does not have a shadow. The Sneaky Archer seems to be a mini version of an Archer Queen. Both have crossbows and have a very similar cloak ability. The design of the Boxer Giant was likely inspired by Lu, the Giant, from the Clash of Rama series in Episode 1 when he was fighting against a level 10 cannon. This video was made before the Builder Base was announced. Interestingly, the Beta Minion and Bomber both have the same exact damage per second and the same amount of hit points at every single level. Sometimes a Bomber may become raised, attacking faster and doing double damage. This is presumed to be just a glitch though. Surprisingly, the Cannon Card still creates a Gravestone when destroyed even though it is a machine and not something that can die. The Night Witch is the regular witch's sister. Also, despite having an axe, she doesn't attack with it. The Dropship was named one of the most useless troops in the game. Hey, I'm just recording facts. I don't know. The Super P.E.K.K.A has the most amount of levels where there isn't any visual changes. It takes many levels before you see any changes happen. Interestingly, the Hog Rider spawned from the Hog Riders are named Hog Rider in the game files. Hog Riders, in the other hand, in the home village are called Boar Riders. Also, according to an MAA response from Darien, the Hog Glider was inspired by a scrapped idea for a main village Goblin Glider, which was pretty much the same troop but with a goblin that collected loot. According to Supercell, the Barbarian King lives in the Town Hall. He also seems to keep switching from 4 fingers to 5. The Archer Queen's crossbow fires out 3 arrows, despite that the crossbow that she's holding is designed to only load with a single arrow. The Grand Warden before the update of June 2019 bore a great resemblance to the late television host Lee Young. The Royal Champion was originally going to be a Valkyrie Queen. And according to a developer, the design was inspired by Izina, Warrior Princess, and the Wakanda Warriors. The Builder Base's Baby Dragons, unlike all its other troops, are weaker than their home village counterparts. Lassie is pretty much a mini P.E.K.K.A. but in a dog form. I think this one was obvious. Before the release of the Electro Owl, it was teased in a video and most believe it was a new spell since pets weren't introduced yet and we didn't know what they were. According to the Mighty Yaks description, it's basically an animal version of the Siege Machine Wallbreaker. If the Unicorn's hero is knocked out and has no target to heal, it will simply remain stationary and just wait. Alright, so this next part is about Super Troops. Now, since Super Troops are normally identical to their regular version, most of the facts I found were pretty much the same exact as their regular counterparts. So we won't mention all of them because in some way they are the same troops, but here are the ones that I found. Prior to a July 1st maintenance break, the Inferno Dragon appeared without a shadow because of a glitch, and according to the patch notes, the Headhunter may have stolen that shadow. Strangely, the Ice Hound is the only air troop in the game to be shown with a grass patch under it. It's all known why only this one has that compared to other flying troops, but uh, yeah. So guys, that is a few facts about every troop in Clash of Clans. This one was definitely a fun video to make and make sure to comment down below which fact was the most interesting to you. Also, feel free to comment facts that maybe I didn't mention. Of course, I avoided to talk about the most obvious facts, but um, yeah. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!